Within statistics, the first thing you might come across is a topic called sampling. Now, if statistics is looking at how data based on people or things can be used to work out trends or probabilities, we need to get this data in the first place. And that's where sampling comes in. Before we can come to any questions though that break down what we're gonna do if we're faced with this sort of thing, we need to familiarize ourselves with the types of sampling. Well, these are your six. You have census. And this is where you would ask everyone what they think or um, what they do in this kind of situation. Um, the government every few years will hold a national census to just uh, keep track of who everyone is, who's living in, what houses, doing what job. The census is going to be the most thorough because it is getting data from absolutely everyone in the population or everything that you're looking at. However, that's going to take time and it could cost money. The next one would be simple random sampling. And this is where everyone has the same probability of being selected. So this could either be you give everyone or everything that you're looking at a number and then use a random number generator to um, select which ones you're going to look at. Uh, or simply you just go around and ask random people so long as it is a truly random selection. The benefit to this is that there's going to be no bias. Um, it's going to be completely random, as it says. However, uh, there is a risk of missing something. If just by chance, the people you chose to talk to weren't the people that would have given you the exact information you were looking for. The next one is systematic. And this one, you would simply ask every X person. So that's to say, you would ask every fifth person you come across or every eighth person you come across. Stratified is the first one, really the main one, we're actually now gonna to have to bring in an equation. For stratified, we're first going to split the population into groups. So this could be groups based on age or gender or class or subculture or any way that you can divide people up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take um, a certain amount of people from each of those groups to make a sample size, a sample selection. Um, and this sample should then reflect the proportions that the uh, initial groups you split them into were. So let's say in a population you had 20% were um, children, 70% were between uh, 20 and 40, and then the remaining percentage were above the age of 40. Your sample size should therefore contain 20% uh, that are children, 70% uh, that are between 20 and 40, and the rest over 40. Okay? The equation that we're going to use um, is going to therefore be the group size that you've split them into divided by the total population and then times the desired sample size that you want. So say you're actively looking for a sample size of 30, you go how many people are in this age group, how many people in the population in total and then times that by the 30. So take a certain number of people from each group um, to make a sample size that reflects those proportions. The benefit of this is that you are getting your sample size is definitely reflecting um, those proportions of um, society. So let's say that you were looking at um, media usage or um, inter technology usage, typically the stereotype would be that younger generations are going to be using more um, of the internet. So if you were doing a survey into how many hours of internet people use, and you picked um, an age, say, toddlers or people who are like middle-aged to being elderly. Uh, again, they are, could possibly be using technology. It's the modern age after all. However, it's probably not going to reflect the usage that's being done 
by the main group of people that are using it, that being teenagers and young adults. However, this is again going to be a complicated process that you want to get right. For quota, when it's going to start off similar. Again, you're going to split into groups. However, now, instead of trying to keep the proportions the same, you're going to take the same number from each group. Um, so that you have equal representation. So again, if you were splitting it up by, let's use something else, let's say height. Um, if you measure, um, you would have same number of people in your sample size who were between five foot and six foot as you would between four foot and five foot and so on. Same number uh, of people from every group. And that, as I say, gives you equal representation in your quota. Finally, then, is opportunity. And this is simply where you ask the first X people you come across. So this will be when you see people that are taking surveys in the streets. They're not necessarily counting every fifth person like you would in systematic. You're just saying whoever they can come across, they're going to ask the data from, ask the first X people. This is going to be quick um, because it is just literally, I want to get a sample size of 20 people. I've come across 20 people, I ask then, I'm done. But similar to the, some of the other earlier ones, you have a risk of missing out certain data. Let's say that you're taking information about uh, people who visit a certain site. The first people who turn up are probably, well, depending on the type of site it is, could be the ones who really like it most. Um, so they're going to give you favourable data, whereas if you were to take data from throughout the day, you may get a more even spread of people's opinions. So these then is the breakdown of the different types of sampling that can happen. Now, those were some potentially long definitions, and you won't often have to actually define them in your answers. It's just a matter of understanding the concepts. That being said, this is still the rather wordy subject, so we're going to have to do a bit more reading. So we're given here five um, examples. So A is that a population is split into groups and a proportional representation is selected. B is that everyone has an equal chance of being selected. C is a convenient sample is taken from anyone available at the time. D is that people are selected using a repetitive system. And E is a population, again, is split into groups, but a certain number are then selected from each. Below this, we are given five options, quota, stratified, simple random sampling, opportunity, and systematic. And we have to identify which description matches which type of sampling. Well, splitting the, the population into groups is either going to be quota or stratified. And then we have a proportional representation. So the group that you're then selecting to take people from each of these groups it's made up of proportions that reflect the original population. That's stratified. So stratified will be A. Uh, B, everyone having an equal chance being selected. That was simple random sampling. So there's no bias whatsoever. Even though it's dealing with everyone, it's not a census, because again, it's about having a chance of being selected. C, a convenient sample is taken from anyone around. Well, that's opportunity, so it's just convenient. If you see these people, you ask them, you're done. D, people are selected using a repetitive system. With repetitive, it's going on in the same kind of intervals. You're asking potentially every uh, fifth person, eighth person. That was systematic. And then so lastly, the population is split into groups of a, and certain number are taken from each. So yeah, again, we're splitting it into groups of people, but then say, I only want two people from each. That's going to be a quota. So quota is then where we'll write E. Another style of question you may just find, though, is something like this. A gym wants to find out what its members think of their opening times. So for A, suggest a suitable sampling frame. Now, this is another phrase we just want to understand. When we say a sampling frame, it's that we're not just going to ask everyone, how are we focusing our attentions? 
because they just want to ask their members or find out what their members think, not just anyone who turns up to the gym, because presumably only a select group of people are going to have bought the membership. We'll say the sampling frame is the membership list. So they will not just ask anyone, they're going to ask the people that they have the names of on this list so they can guarantee that they are members. And then for B, identify the sampling units. This is similar. You're saying, well, what is it that you're looking at? In this case, it would be the members. If you were instead, um, say, in a factory and looking at potentially defective units of something, that type of object would be your sampling unit instead. So it doesn't have to be who you're asking. It's just, what is it that we are studying? What are we getting data about? For C, it extends the uh, scenario to say the gym decides to ask the first 20 members that come in one morning. And based on this, state the sampling technique. Well, they're asking just the first number of people they come across. So that's going to be opportunity. And then for D, it wants one advantage and one disadvantage of this. Well, as we said before, an advantage of opportunity is that it's quick or quicker than others. But it's also, you could say, cheaper. Because if you're just going up to ask certain people, you don't have to um, pay as much, say, potentially equipment, or even just to pay the people taking the survey, because they're not going to be around as long. Again, linking back to that quicker aspect. One disadvantage, though, is that you could um, miss um, data. If you're just asking those first few people, maybe again, they either came in a group or there's a reason why they came in first. They're going to have something in common potentially. And so if you're just looking at one subgroup within the members, you're missing information that could have been representing, the, representing what all the other members think of.